Welcome back, viewers. I know I've been saying this in the last couple of videos, but we are getting close to testing our indicators. Wanted to make this one more short video here for you guys, and then I think the next video will officially be testing indicators. But before we get into this video, if you have not watched my first uh, three or four, I think five videos now, maybe. Uh, then you definitely need to go back and start at video one and watch them through. Here at the Academy of Forex, we are building the best trading system possible as a team. And as a team, we will all profit from it when we are done. Trust me when I say you do not want to miss out on this. All right, guys. So... Today's video is going to be on the tools we need for our system and um, some of the things that are kind of common when backtesting indicators or common with systems in general, trading systems in general. So let's start with the tools we will need for our system. As I said in one of my previous videos, it is highly unlikely that we will find a one single indicator holy grail. Um, that is one single indicator that does everything we need in a system as a whole. And I say that because most systems are comprised of a few different indicators that do different things. As I said before, these are tools. Think of them as any other tool. When you go to work on your house or work on your car or whatever project might need a tool, there are specific tools that do specific things. And a trading system is generally no different. So we have number one on the list of our tools is an entry indicator. This can be just about any indicator you can think of. As I did in one of my last videos, uh, I think maybe the last video, when I was showing you how to uh, play around and tweak indicators, this could be a zero line cross. The entry indicator could be a double line cross. It could be an oscillator that crosses a specific number. Uh, there are just tons of different indicators out there. Uh, moving average crosses, you know, on and on and on. So that being said, we need a good entry indicator. We need a good indicator that gives us the green light to go into a trade, whether it be short or whether it be long. That is the very foundation of a good trading system. Without an entry indicator, the other pieces of our trading system doesn't really matter much. If we are using an entry indicator that is giving us a highly delayed signal, uh, for example, uh, is telling us to enter a trade once the uh, trade or trend has significantly ran, then we will probably have an issue with that. It needs to be giving us the green light to enter a trade um, as soon as possible, but at the same time reducing as much risk as possible. So with that being said, a good entry indicator is an absolute must. That is where we start our trading system. So um, that is what we are concentrating most here in the beginning of this channel, is finding good entry indicators. Now, as we are testing and tweaking and playing with indicators to see if we can get better results out of them, 
we should also be mindful of whether or not that indicator can be used for the other tools that we need in a system. So the number two, and this one is not set in stone. Uh, this is a confirmation indicator. So this uh, tool, the confirmation indicator, typically complements the entry indicator. And that is that it should be confirming the green light that our entry indicator is giving us. Now, a few things that you should be mindful of with a confirmation indicator is that it is not keeping you out of what would have been potential winners, but it needs to keep you out of what would have been potential losing trades. It's very important. A confirmation indicator should almost always keep you out of bad trades and give you the same green light that you are getting from your entry indicator on good winning trades. If the confirmation indicator is keeping you out of bad trades, but also keeping you out of just as many good trades, then it really is worthless at that point. Keep in mind that um, the stop losses we set on orders are set at a very specific amount. You can only lose that much that we have set the stop loss at, and that's it, no more. Now on the reverse side, once we enter a trade, and once we have a full system in place, we will take half of the trade off the table at our first take profit, and we will then let the rest of the trade run as long as it can. So a 50 to 50 uh, ratio of the confirmation indicator keeping you out of bad trades and good trades actually does not add up to be 50-50 when you look at it in that fashion. When the confirmation indicator at a 50-50 is keeping you out of the losing trades, but stopping you from taking good, long running winning trades, uh, it becomes seriously problematic. So. A good confirmation indicator, as I said, should almost always keep you out of bad trades and keep you in the good trades. Now, the next tool in our system should be a good exit indicator. This one is generally about as challenging to find as a good entry indicator. It's not quite as important, but very close to. A good exit indicator will allow you to stay in a trade for as long as possible without stopping you out or having you exit too soon. This can be very challenging to find in an indicator. Often you will find that an exit indicator kind of works the opposite of an entry indicator. You want it to be kind of lagging in the beginning as you enter the trade, but it needs to be very responsive towards the end as it is getting ready to exit a trade. I know it seems like a good entry indicator would work just as well as a good exit indicator, but it often does not work that way. 
it's odd how um, indicators can be tweaked to um, get you in trades very soon. But as you go to exit the trade, you will often find that they have you exit way too late. And so you're giving back lots of profit um, by the time it has you exit the trade. So um, a good exit indicator, on the other hand, often will be very delayed on getting you in a trade or signaling that you should uh, be entering, but uh, often gets you out of a trade not as quick as possible. There's a thin line, um, but it gets you out at um, a very good time. You also have to be careful. You want to make sure that your exit indicator isn't set to where it reacts so fast that it is stopping you out of trades um, that you could have um, rode out for a while longer. So as we are going through testing indicators, we will want to keep our eye out for a good exit indicator. Now, the next tool we are looking for in our trading system should be a good um, volume slash volatility slash range indicator. Um, and I call it that because they all kind of do the same thing. Um, they're slightly different kind of in what they read, but they all serve about the same purpose. And that is to make sure that we are not entering trades when the market is very slow and unlikely to move into a trend. Uh, we want to make sure we stay out of those ranging, uh, really choppy up and down, up and down, up and down markets. We want to get into a trade as it's breaking out into a trend and then ride that trend for um, as much as we can get out of it before we are um, being stopped out or our exit indicator is telling us um, to exit the trade. Uh, this one is also quite important. You will find that there will be a lot of indicators that give you good signals to enter during the beginning of a trend. And you will have very good results on um, when to loss uh, signals. But then when it comes to a choppy ranging market, you will give back all the winning trades that that indicator provided you with in the trending markets. A lot of the times a ranging market will just eat you alive. Uh, it will give you uh, signal after signal after signal after signal that just You'll just take a loss, take a loss, take a loss. You'll see that in um, some uh, quite a bit of the indicators as I start doing videos and testing them that the ranging chop markets are the ones that we need to avoid um, as much as possible. So, having a good volume slash volatility slash um, range indicator is absolutely worth its weight in gold. So that's something that we definitely need to make sure we have in our trading system. The last is the ATR. If you haven't watched my video on the take profit stop loss uh, video, which you should have at this point, 
uh, it is absolutely imperative that you go and watch that video now. Um, that probably means you haven't watched the other videos that I've recommended you watch. So start at the first video and watch them through. It's not that many. It's not going to take you very long. And it will set you up um, with a lot of information as to what we are trying to achieve here and um, you know what it is we're looking for and how we're going to go about it. So everybody should know what the ATR is at this point, the average true range, and you should know why we use it and how we use it. So um, obviously that is one of our tools that we need to have in our toolkit. So some common things that you are going to run into. This is from experience. There will be times that we hit our first take profit and we get um, stopped out for the rest at break even. Of course, this is once we get further into developing our system. In the beginning, again, we are only testing, I will only be testing myself and everyone else should be doing the same. We should only be testing to hit the first take profit and we will consider that to be a win. We are not looking for um, whether or not we would have got, um, you know, taken half off the trade at the first take profit and whether or not the other half got stopped out at break even or ran or any of that. But that is the ultimate goal. So uh, we set the, uh, we get in a trade, we take half the trade off the table at our first take profit, which is calculated by the ATR. Then we set the other half of the trade to stop at break even and we let it run and it will either take off and our exit indicator will eventually come into play and tell us to exit or the trade will um, turn around on that last half and it will break uh, stop us out at break even that is the ultimate goal that is the um, best way to trade, the best way to manage your money. And you will find that there will be quite often that your first take profit is hit. You will take half off the table. You will set the other half at break even. The trade will turn around and stop you out for break even. Then it will turn back around and run in the direction you were hoping it was going to go. And you'll be sitting back, pulling your hair, thinking to yourself, you know, I could have had all this extra money, all these extra pips. Why am I uh, taking half off the table and setting the rest at break even? Um, you will start to question the methods. Trust me, you will. As we get further and further into this process, if we as a collective determine that there is a better way, then um, by all means, we will adopt that method. But at this point, I have found over the years of uh, trying and testing and trading the live markets that this is the best way of doing it. And until we find something different, this is what we're going to assume works. So with that being said, don't get frustrated. Don't trade with live money unless you are sure something works better. Forward test it, backwards test it, test it however you want to test it, but do it on a uh, test account with fake money. Don't do it risking real money and a real account. Um, like I said, it will happen often. Missing trades that run. 
this is an, this is another one that I'm sure will drive people absolutely insane. There will be times that your system, our indicators, our entry indicator, however we have it set up, does not catch a trade that ends up taking off and running. It happens. It almost is certain to continue to happen regardless of the system we build and we put into place. It can be very frustrating um, to see a trade that you potentially could have had a part of um, run and run and run and run and you're sitting back thinking to yourself, but if I would have just relaxed this rule or um, not used this indicator or that indicator or change the settings here, then I would have been a part of that trade. But often what you will find is that you will gain that trade, but you will lose in another trade, in another trade, and another trade. Um, there is a give and take, like anything in this world. Um, you will gain something, but you will sacrifice other things. And that is, again, coming from experience. Um, I've seen it over and over and over. And so you will often find that you, um, will, you would have been able to take place in that trade. Um, but but you will um, lose what you gained in other places. So just um, understand that you will not get every single running trade. You will miss some. Um, it's bound to happen. You are bound to see it when you're testing indicators. And if you uh, concentrate too hard on um, dialing everything into where you get every single last trade possible, you will drive yourself insane and you will never get to a system that can achieve what you are looking for. So, um, again, if, if we get to the point um, throughout this that we can achieve that, then that is wonderful. But trust me, it is something that um, drove me absolutely crazy for the longest time. Um, I would be testing an indicator. It would look good here. It would look good there. And then I'd miss one long running trade and I'd get so frustrated and I'd go back and start tweaking the settings um, and I would sacrifice um, in other places. So don't let it drive you crazy. Um, just find something that works more often than not. That is the name of the game. Now, with that being said, the last thing I'm going to touch base on is weighted indicators. And the reason why I touch base on weighted indicators specifically is because, in my opinion, they are the best to look for. And I believe they are the best to look for because they often put an emphasis on uh, movement of the market. This is something that um, can be very important as the markets are making good moves. And it's very important because as a market is making a good move, you want your indicator to um, reflect the the movement and the volume that is coming into the market and it should be able to account for um, that movement um, whether it be your exit indicator or your entry indicator your confirmation indicator or even your volume volatility indicator those are kind of you know go without saying because that's exactly what they do um, this actually helps out more in the entry indicator, confirmation indicator, exit indicator. And that's because when a 
um, Forex pair is making a really big move, um, you want the indicator to be able to give it a little bit more wiggle room um, to allow that pair to run as far as it can. And when that pair is losing um, momentum or losing its volatility, you want your indicator to start to tighten up a little bit. Um, again, this is just my opinion from experience. It is how my own personal system is set up. I personally find that weighted indicators um, are some of the best indicators to look for. Now, that doesn't mean to go out and dig up every single weighted indicator that you can find. There are definitely regular indicators that are not weighted that um, do a fantastic job of giving you a specific segment. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. Like I said, on the next video, we will officially start testing some indicators. At this point, if you have not subscribed to the channel, you need to do that. Uh, click the subscribe button below, turn on the notification so you don't miss any of the videos here. Um, these videos are super important as we go forward, uh, as everybody is testing and playing and tweaking indicators, and as a collective, as we are building our trading system here. So, please subscribe, turn on notifications. Uh, there is also a link below in the description to our Discord server. Join us on Discord so we can all discuss indicators and discuss how we are going to develop this trading system as we move forward. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. I will see you on the next one.